It's time for another one-off rebuild and this time we're going to try and take a Scottish club to European glory. We're going to take over as Rangers manager and give ourselves five years not just to topple Celtic at the top of the league but also become a European success. That's right, today's rebuild is going to be Rangers out in the Scottish division. Celtic fans, if you're watching, don't worry, we'll do you soon. We'll do a rebuild for both clubs at some point. Maybe even another Scottish club. I have loved the Scottish saves that I've done in the past but yes, Rangers is the club we're taking over here and we're going to try and take them to European glory. This is a club that is very used to success with 55 first division titles in Scotland. The last one coming in 2021 under Steven Gerrard. They've got a European Cup Winners' Cup, two Europa League Runners-Up awards, one of them being very recently in 2022. In terms of where we're predicted to come, we're clearly the second best team in the division based on the player quality at the clubs. Celtic are 8-11 to favourites to win the league. We're 5-4. to So whilst it wouldn't be a huge unexpected surprise if Rangers did win the title. It's clearly leaning in Celtic's favour so there's going to be a lot of work for us to do here to take this club to another level. We're going to overhaul the team with transfers, we're going to upgrade the facilities and try and take this team and the nation of Scotland into European limelight. If you do enjoy the video it would really really mean a lot if you could smash that like button. The support on the channel recently has been insane and you guys taking that second to hit that like button, it's free to do, really does help in the YouTube algorithm so thank you to anyone who does that. On top of that, if you're in this percentage of people that are watching the videos but aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Comment down below who you want to see rebuild next. All of these rebuilds come from your guys' comments. And if you want to as well, you can become a channel member and help us choose these rebuilds. I actually did a poll for Celtic or Rangers with the channel members and Rangers was the one chosen as our next rebuild. So yes, here we go. Let's take a look at the squad. Currently, it is a team with some decent players in there for sure. We have Connor Goldson as our best ability player apparently the centre-back formerly of Brighton and Shrewsbury he looks like a decent option in that defence but at 29 maybe we need to think about the future there Jose Sifuentes is also in the team we've used an updated transfer database here so we have all of the latest transfers up until I think it was the 20th of August so anything that's happened after that won't be reflected I know Glenn Kamara is potentially leaving Rangers but because the transfer update is from a few days ago he is still in the team we've also got some of the new incomings like Danilo Pereira from from Ajax, the Brazilian striker who we're hoping will do the job for us. Other players that came in this summer, like Chelsea's Duyon Sterling, are also at the club. But the players that we're likely going to build around long term are Danilo Pereira, Ianis Haji on the wing, and Ridvan Yilmaz is also a very good left back option at only the age of 21. There's plenty of players with potential too. Alex Lowry looking like the best option from our academy. He's currently on loan at Hearts for this season, but he looks like he has a great future. Tactically, we're currently setting up with a 4 3 3. That might change, but this. This was the recommended tactic for Rangers that the game provided. So we're going with this at the minute. It might adjust as time goes on. We've got about £4 million to spend, but nothing in the wage budget. So whether we're going to be able to get any deals done is another question. And looking at the team, it's actually looking stacked in a lot of areas already. It looks like Rangers have bought a lot of players in recent times. If anything, we might have to try and get rid of some players. So I'll have a look around and see if we can do any business to upgrade the team. But if not, we'll see how the team does at the end of season one and then really get stuck in to our rebuild. And after looking around in the market, I actually couldn't find anyone that we could bring in that was good value for money, but also the main problem was that we were really overloaded in every single position and we couldn't really sell anyone on, so there was no point bringing players in. And this is how we did in our first season. We did win a trophy, winning the Premier Sports Cup, beating Aberdeen 3-0 in the final. According to the game here, the last time Rangers won this trophy was back in 2010, so it's great to have that back in our cabinet. The Scottish Cup, we were knocked out of, and the Champions League, very disappointing we didn't even make the group stage. We got knocked out by PSV 5-3 on aggregate that put us into the Europa League and how well did we do there? Group stage, we just scraped a second place finish in our group with nine points alongside AEK Athens and then how far did we go after that? We went into the knockout playoff round and we actually lost to Lens 2-1, 0-0 at our stadium by the looks of it, and then losing 2-1 out in France to Len. Very disappointing on a European front, but how did we do in the Scottish division? We came second, and actually quite close as well. 92 points for us, losing the same amount of games as Celtic, but drawing three more, which meant they got 98 points, we got 92, and we end the first season... I guess kind of where we expected to be, but a little bit disappointing on the European front. There's still some gaps to fill to get us to that level that Celtic
Celtic are at, and then hopefully we can start to push further in Europe. But we have got one trophy under our belt, not that we did anything to really help that. And in terms of the transfers, we've got three million pounds to spend and 90 grand in the wage budget. Hopefully with a bit more movement in the wage budget there, maybe we can sell some players on, bring some more players in and refresh the team. We'll start off with the outgoings. You might have seen Stephen Davis was leaving. He's 38. We let his contract expire. He's gone to Belgium to play for Charleroi. Dujon Sterling, as good as he might end up being for Rangers in real life, just isn't rated in FM and as a backup right back, didn't look great. So we've let him leave to Preston for £325,000. We've got an academy player who at least in the FM world looks to be a better prospect than Dujon Sterling. So we are going to promote him into the first team and let Sterling go. We had too many options up front. We had Kimar Roof, Danilo Pereira, Cyril Dessas and also Sam Lammers. So he is one of the ones that is going to leave us. He's gone to Toulouse out in France for £3.4 million. We really didn't need all that depth up front. So he's gone and left the club and we get some more money to spend on positions that actually need it. A lot of these players were actually in the last year of their contracts. So it made sense to sell them. So we have let John Lundstrom go, the 29 year old central midfielder, a decent squad option who actually played a lot last year and did very well in terms of goals and assists, which allowed us to get some money for him. He's gone to second division Spanish side Almeria for 3.4 mil. We spoke about having too many striker options. I'd rather have kept Cyril Dessers and let Kimar Roof go, but Roof did not want to leave the club. So Dessers was the one that had to go. 28 year old Nigerian has gone to Sampdoria for 3.6 mil, having signed from Genk for 5.25 million. You can see he didn't play much at all. Two starts, 10 bench appearances. So I'll take any of the money we can get for him. And finally, another player entering the last year of his deal. Very sad to see him go because he looked very talented, but he didn't want to sign a new contract. Borna Barasic, the left back, 30 years of age, has gone to Rapid Vienna for 4.5 million. Having came from the Croatian divisions, he tore it up for Rangers for a few years, but it's time for him to go. Yilmaz will have to become the regular starting left back and Barasic will say goodbye to him and try and reinvest that money the best we can. So let's get to the incomings. Firstly, our backup left back this season is going to be Juan Manuel Ramos, a Uruguayan 26 year old with some decent attributes coming in from Pawok on a free deal, having left them after one season. He's not going to do too much I wouldn't have thought but as backup to Yilmaz he does help the team. We spent 1.5 million on 22 year old Italian inside forward Vincenzo Milico who joins us from Ascoli in the Serie B where he was great last year and that's probably why he ended up on the scouts reports. If you don't know already we only sign players that our scouts recommend in these videos so that I don't get to use any prior knowledge. I've never heard of Milico before but he's done very well in Serie B and he comes in as a good option on that left flank and also a potential striking option. Carlo Holz joins us from Rosenborg, a 24-year-old Danishman with plenty of experience and he's super versatile, one of the most versatile players in this whole game I would have thought, natural in six different positions. He joins us for only 2 million from Rosenborg after two great seasons for them, playing very, very well. I feel like he could be the real deal for us. That versatility is really going to benefit us and comes in as a best player in a few positions there for us already. We signed a young centre-back by the name of Bojan Kovacevic here, a Serbian 19-year-old joining us from Kukariki out in the Serbian divisions. I've definitely butchered the pronunciation there. But £2.1 million looks like great business for a player who's already one of our best centre-backs, as you can see, but also has the potential to be the best centre-back at the club. But we have signed a Swedish backup goalkeeper, 22 years of age. His name is Samuel Brolin. He's six foot eight, great aerial reach and jumping reach. Strength is there as well. First touch and passing are really weak, but he could be a good goalkeeping option to come on the bench. And he's got plenty of years to get better yet. We've actually loaned him back out to AIK for for the season so good luck to him I think 2.5 mil is good business for this level of keeper but there's two star players that we've brought in in this transfer window the first one is Lucas Gonzalez a 23 year old Argentinian with great attributes that comes in as our best central midfielder at the club for 6 million pounds from Independiente after two good seasons for them he can score he can create and I'm hoping he will do that job for us in the middle of the park and another 19 year old Serbian joins us this time it's Juros Kabic joining us for 6.5 million pounds could potentially rise to be 7 million from Sirvena Zvezda out in Serbia, where he had a decent first season for them. But we are seeing a lot of potential here. The scouts recommended him highly, and he comes in as a good wing option that has a lot of time to get better yet. He's got great attributes to start off with, and that is our transfer business complete. We actually did very well in terms of our incomings and outgoings and keeping it balanced. And with the players that we now had, I actually thought with the ability we have in a number 10 position, it's best to switch to this 4 2 3 1 formation 
We have Kieran Dow who can play as the attacking midfielder. Carlo Holser can play there as well. And we only really had Glenn Kamara who could play in this deep line playmaker role behind two midfielders. So we're going to progress it forward a bit, become a more attacking team and hopefully see some results there. If we do have a look at our best 11 currently, this is the team we're looking at with Butland in goal. Jack Butland, formerly of Stoke. He was also at Crystal Palace for a little while. He's our goalkeeper. We've got Tavernier at right back, who is one of our best players, but at the age of 31, we'll need replacing soon. Yilmaz, we know we've got Ben Davis and Connor Goldson in centre-back. Glenn Kamara in the midfield alongside our new signing, Gonzalez. Rabi Matondo is our player cutting in from the left-hand side. We've got Carlo Holzer, who we know on the right. Kieran Dow as the shadow striker and then Danilo Pereira up front. For the Scottish divisions, this is a team that could definitely do very well. Whether it will translate into European success, I don't know. I believe our odds on the title have actually gone down a little bit. Celtic are deemed a clear favourites yet again to win the title. 8-13 to to win the trophy. So let's see if we can upset those odds in Season 2. And our young side looks to have done the business. We opted for youth over experience. And these players have done so well for us already. Getting 100 points and beating Celtic to the league who only got 88 points. That is a phenomenal result from the youngsters. And they're only going to get better yet. So this definitely bodes well for the future. If we have a look at the league table in full, you can see we only drew one game all season and we only lost four matches all season two. Great goal difference and a great points total led by Danilo Pereira, who is by far and away one of our best players. I didn't show you, but last season he was phenomenal with 39 goals in 35. We'll take more of a deep dive now into the team now that we know it a little bit better. But yes, 30 goals for him in 27 games, doing very well up front. That's likely going to attract interest from around the world. Carlo Holser does great in his first year with 15 assists. He's settled into the Scottish divisions and the same can be said for Lucas Gonzalez who gets 12 assists and 5 goals from midfield in his first year at the club. Great result there. The Scottish Cup we were runners up in losing to Celtic in the final 1-0 which would have been a little bit of a gut punch but you know what? We'll definitely take the Scottish division title over the Scottish Cup and then when it comes to the Champions League we knocked out Shakhtar in a playoff match to go into the group stage and how well did we do there? Let's find us. Uh, we came bottom of our group on four points with Mines, Arsenal and PSG. A very hard group for a Rangers team. I'd like to have done a little bit better than Mines, but you know what? When you're playing against PSG and Arsenal, we were always going to struggle, but I'll definitely take that as a second season result. Ionis Haji was our best player this year, apparently. 14 goals and 11 assists. Great average match rating. He is up there with Danilo Pereira. Joros Kabic as well comes into the team and at only the age of 19-20 has gone and got 17 goals and 6 assists in the league. We have been scoring goals for fun and these young players were really, really helping us. Carlo Holsa, Kieran Dow with 14 goals. The goals are coming from everywhere on the pitch. Even Maliko, the guy we brought in to play on the left. He's played 21 games as a starter, one as a substitute and scored 10 and assisted 8. So it's some great results for all of these new players. There's some players that maybe aren't getting as much game time as I might have thought, like Todd Campwell. Maybe we look to sell him on. I thought he'd be a much better player for us, but clearly not deemed good enough. Even Rabi Matondo here only started one game all season, so we might have to adjust some of our plans and maybe sell some of these players for cash before they become obsolete players for us and we can't get any money for them. Maybe it's time to cash out. We'll see what we can do in the season three transfer window. With 7 million and 83 grand in the wage budget, there's definitely work that we can do to try and improve this team. So let's see what we can come up with. Before we get into the season three transfers, just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying the video up to this point, take a few seconds for me hit that like button and I will class you as an absolute legend if you do that but let's get on to the transfers and the first one is an outgoing Nicholas Raskin who looked very promising at the start of this rebuild I understand we haven't really showed off every player in the team there were so many but he was someone that the game ranked as one of our best players in the side the Belgian he's now 23 never really clicked for him after that first season and we have sold him to Standard Liège for 5 million it looks like that's where we got him from for 1.3 mil so that looks like good business in terms of turning him around when he hadn't really played much for us at all. I mentioned letting Todd Cantwell go and we did exactly that, selling him to Coventry for £700,000. He signed for us for 1.5 mil, didn't play much at all in the second season, so we'll take any cash we can get for him and get him off the wage books. And we've also let Leon King go out on loan. He's gone to Dundee United. He is a very promising centre-back who I'm hoping could do a lot for us. If you want to know where he's been, last year he was on loan at Hibs and did well, so Dundee United for him should be a good move to get more football again. And right Ryan Jack has also left us at the end of his contract to go and join Espanyol on a free. We wanted some extra depth at fullback, so in comes Brandon Williams, formerly of Manchester United, 23 years of age, always a good player in FM to pick up when he is a free agent, so scouts seem to love him. He's got a perfectionist personality, he's young, plenty of room to get better, great 
experience being at Manchester United, playing for Norwich in the Prem. Hopefully it all translates well into being a good player for us here at Rangers. Nicolas Dominguez seems like a great pickup for us, formerly of Bologna. He's been playing over there for a long time and doing very well for them. 26 years of age now, heading into his prime, and we have got him for absolutely nothing. His contract expired. We've picked him up. A few other clubs wanted him. I know Juve were interested, but somehow he's ended up coming to Rangers. Great tackling, technique, vision, passing, a real workhorse of a midfielder. I think he's going to slot straight in, valued at £20 million. He seems like a great bit of business to get him. This is a real coup for our club. We've got a new centre-back on a free deal as well. We have really exploited the free transfers this year, bringing in Taylor Harwood Bellis. An interesting one because he did actually play for Celtic at one point, but we've got him off Manchester City. He was a free agent from them, didn't play much last year. He's been around the block playing for a few different clubs. Clearly a player with a lot of ability at centre-back. Comes in as one of our better options there too. And at the age of 22, he's got plenty of years to get better yet. Only expecting to be a squad player. He's a very nice depth option to have in the team. But the main chunk of our cash was splashed on this man, who I'm hoping will be our new shadow striker, Adam Karabek, a Czech international with three appearances at the age of 21, signing from Sparta Prague after two decent seasons for them. Not really clicked, but the scouts really ranked him highly. Gave him a lot of potential as well. They don't just think he could help us now. They think he could become one of the best players in the league. And I really see how that could be the case with great physicals, great technical ability too, and mental ability for such a young player as well. At the age of 21, he is going to make our team a lot better. Nine million pounds seems like great business for him. And now our best 11 is starting to come together very nicely. It's still Butland in goal, but Williams does come in ahead of Tavernier at right back. Goldson and Davis are still our centre-back pairings. Yilmaz is at left back, but our midfield now is looking very strong. All players that we've bought in. Gonzalez alongside Dominguez for that double Argentinian midfield. Holser, Karabek and Kabic are the rest of our midfield. Finish with Danilo Pereira up top. The team is a lot younger now. Yes, we have lost a bit of that experience, but I think in the long term, this is really going to help us. We're still not favourites to win the league, but we are in a much better position than we were before. We've also got some players in the best 11 in the league too, which is nice to see. And Celtic's odds are shrinking a little bit. And hopefully this year, this young team with potential can help us challenge in Europe and also on the Scottish front. But it hasn't worked out for us this year. 14 points less than last season. We get 86 points and Celtic finish with 96, which is quite disappointing. How well did we do in other competitions? Semi-final of the Scottish Cup, Premier Sports Cup, we were runners-up to Celtic, who knocked us out in the Scottish Cup too. They've really got the best of us this year. How well did we do in the Champions League? Let's have a look. League phase, we finished in the 24th place, which actually qualified us for a knockout playoff round, where Manchester United knocked us out 6-5 on aggregate, beating us 4-0 at the Ibrox. That meant we would have beat them 5-2 at Old Trafford, which would have been an all-time result if we could have actually have knocked out Man United, but they did eventually get the best of us. But that's shown we can compete with the biggest teams in the world, even clubs with tons of money that we definitely don't have. In terms of the best performers this year, Karabek has been our best one, apparently. He has got 12 goals and 8 assists in 32 league appearances. Danilo Pereira still hitting them incredible numbers with 45 goals in 48 games in all comps. 15 goals in all comps for Haji as well. Tavernier did have a great season despite not being in our best 11. He's still done very well. Lucas Gonzalez having a another great season in that midfield too. Interestingly enough though, not the best year in the world for Dominguez, who I thought would be our best player. Nine assists is still very good, but he didn't quite hit the heights of some of the other players in this team. Brandon Williams though, doing very well with 38 starts. Joros Kabic seems quite disappointing though. This guy had a great year last year out with 17 goals. This season didn't quite click for him despite being a better player. So not sure what's happened there. Carlo Holser also not having as good of a year. Maybe the team isn't quite clicking just yet. I'm not too sure. But after three seasons at Rangers. I'm not sure whether I class this as a success just yet. I mean, we've won a league title and won Premier Sports Cup, but that's it. I'd like to do a lot more than that. We've got two more seasons now to make some transfers to bring success to the Ibrox. You might see we've got youth recruitment up to a 20 now, junior coaching, training facilities and youth facilities all in a very good place. And we've got about 9 million to spend this summer. So let's see how we can swindle that into some great players and really improve our team. And we have had an incredible summer. This is going to go down as one of the best transfer windows, not just in Rangers history, but in my opinion, in any club's history ever. I think we have made some great deals here. We'll start off with the sales. Juan Manuel Ramos, we bought in in our second season as a backup left back. He's gone to the Greek divisions for like 100k. It's nothing much, but he's off the books at least. Rabi Matondo is left to join Krasnodar out in Russia for 2.3 mil. Kiran Dow goes to Shakhtar in Ukraine. The 27 year old leaves for 6.5 mil. I feel like we had grown past him in terms of a level of ability at the club. Connor Goldson is left to join Leicester. 32 
22-year-old centre-back has been great for us. But he now goes back to the Premier League for 3.2 mil. Jack Butland is no longer our goalkeeper. He goes to Nottingham Forest at 32 years of age for 2.5 million pounds. Another centre-back leaving, Ben Davis, goes to Norwich for 1.1 million. You might be thinking, you're selling all of Rangers' core squad. Yes, maybe, but we have bought in way better players to replace them. But one more huge sale to note is Jose Sifuentes, who was one of our best players when we started this rebuild. But with the midfielders we bought in, he's no longer really good enough to start most games. Only started five games last year. So he goes to the Bundesliga to Hertha Berlin for six and a half million pounds. Now we made 22 million pounds from those sales. And just to let you know, we only spent 14 million pounds in total. 14, that is not 40, 14 million on the players that you're about to see. So many great free deals, so many great signings. This was an insane window. Firstly, we've bought in Ahmad Diallo. He had played for Rangers before, but he was now a free agent from Manchester United. As an inverted winger on the right, you couldn't ask for much more than this. He's going to be one of the best players in the league for sure. 23 years of age, loads of years to get better too. Coming in from United, left on a free. He is going to be unreal for us, I'm sure. One of the best young ball-playing centre-backs in the world at 21, Zeno de Bast joins us on a free two. He's capped for Belgium. 17 times already at centre back. Good with both feet. Comes in from one of the best sides in Belgium in Anderlecht on a free. Loads of clubs were interested. He decided to join Rangers. I really feel like he's one of the best centre backs that we actually could have got at a team like Rangers. No offence to them, just the league we're in. It's hard to attract the best talent, but to get a player like this is a great deal. We've got a new goalkeeper. Dean Henderson comes in better than Jack Butland, younger too, joining us from Man United. Again, another player with Brandon Williams, with Diallo that we've got for Man U after his contract was up. Obviously, he's been around the block, being linked to Crystal Palace in real life, but he is a great goalkeeper. Has England experience too, even if just one cap. Hopefully, we can reignite all the promise that he did have in his earlier career here at Rangers. Fabian Ryder joins us on a free deal too. The Swiss 23-year-old. The scouts raved about him. I already know personally as well. He's one of the best young midfielders in all of FM23. To get him at such a bargain price is unreal. Great passer, great first touch as well. He is going to be a very nice midfield option. Speaking of midfield options, we've bought in Tommy Doyle on a free, yet again, another player on a free deal. He joins us at the end of his contract from Man City. A lot of these players not good enough for the best level Premier League teams, but for us, they come in as top level talents and he comes in as one of our best midfielders, can play that deep line playmaker role very nicely, can tackle well, can pass well, 23 years of age, loads of years to get better, resale value as well, worth 20 mil, we picked him up on a free. And the final free transfer that we've made is a crazy one. I mean, Ivan Tony to get him at Rangers is is an absolute master stroke in my opinion. The reason we were able to get him is Brentford got relegated. He was playing in the championship and clearly didn't want to extend because of that. He had Premier League clubs interested, but he decided to join us out here in Scotland. 26 goals in the championship. I think he is going to tear it up in the Scottish league. We've improved at left back too, spending six million pounds on the Italian left back from Juve, Emmanuel Valeri. He joined them from Cremonese, a team in the second division of Italy. He's been very good when he has played for Juve, but not deemed good enough. But for us, he is definitely a top level left back option and can really compete with Ridvan Yilmaz. And then we spent 8.5 million on a new right back to replace James Tavernier long term. Kelvin is the man to join us, joining us from ATP out in Brazil where he has been unreal for four seasons, playing tons of games and playing very well for them. He's got great ability all round, good going forward, good defensively, great potential, only 24 and our side now is looking so much better than what we knew it. What a great window that was. It's now Dean Henderson in goal with Kelvin, DeBast, Harwood Bellis and Valeri as our defence. Fabian Ryder and Dominguez make up the midfield with Giallo, Karabek, Kabic and Danilo Pereira apparently in our best 11. I have a feeling Ivan Tony will take that position before we know it. But the team is now ready for our fourth season as Rangers boss. I think we've made an unreal side here for the Scottish leagues and hopefully that will translate into some European success as well. And that is much more like it. Our team has gone on to actually win the Scottish division yet again. Five points ahead of Celtic. Not as many points as it took to win the title before but still we won't care we have got that title in the bag goal difference massively out shooting Celtic as well let's see what else we won we have got runners up in the Premier Sports Cup and we might actually we actually have done it we've actually got our first oh okay that threw me off a little bit sorry we've got our first European win I thought I saw the Champions League saw we got knocked out didn't think too much of it just then and I looked to the right and you can see Europa League winners beating Tottenham 1-0 Let's get into all of that in a second. Firstly, Premier Sports Cup losing out, runners up to Hibs, who beat us an extra time. Scottish Cup quarter final knocked out by Hibs, who went on to win both cups. Fair play to them. But yes, Champions League, we didn't even make it into the Champions League because 
I mean, crazily so, it looks like we beat, what, 3-1? We beat Ajax 3-1 at their stadium. They then came to the Ibrox and beat us 7-1 to beat us 8-4 in aggregate. A crazy result there to lose that at home. That puts into the Europa League where we've gone on to win the competition, beating Spurs 1-0. Let's take a look. Uh, we'll start off with a league phase. We finished in first place there. Okay, looking very strong. Us and Tottenham, clearly the two best teams up there. We then went out into the round of 16 straight away, took on Club Bruges, beat them 8-4 in aggregate quarterfinals we take on Ren, beat them 11-9 on aggregate what a game that would have been what a time man semi-final we beat Lazio 4-3 on aggregate then take on Spurs in the final win 1-0 with the goal scorer being Ivan Tony. of course it was Ivan Tony scoring in the 63rd minute let's take a look at who our best performers were this year and the main one of course Ivan Tony, 59 goals in 52 appearances in all competitions, having the season of his life out in Scotland, 39 goals in the league alone. Haji still doing very well, 27 years of age now, and a very, very talented option, loved by the fans as well. So consistent for us since the start of this rebuild. First season didn't do too much, but then after that, he has been unreal on that right-hand side. We've got Harwood Bellis doing well as well. Kelvin having a great first year for us at right-back. Karabek Diallo getting 11 goals. Pereira still chipping in with 32. We've now got two big goal scorers at the club and that seems to be helping us a hell of a lot just to show you as well we had this guy come out of the academy who looks unreal russell stevenson two appearances for scotland one goal he is going to take over as our main striker soon probably once our rebuild is done but just to show you we can produce some good young talent some good homegrown talent as well this guy is going to be one of the best strikers in world football by the looks of it with the ability he's got so that's awesome to see but yes karabek still chipping in with loads of goals zeno de bast having a good first year eight goals for cabbage Bojan kovacevic who we picked up in our second season here I think is still doing very well for us a very consistent performer now at the age of 22 brilliant fourth season at the club to add that trophy to the cabinet alongside a league title that we've won that makes two league titles one premier sports cup and a Europa League which might be I could be wrong but is that the first time the club has won it in their history um, it actually is yes and we were runners up twice since the new millennium so it's great that we finally got that Europa League win it doesn't look like we're going to win the UCL barely couldn't even qualify for it in this rebuild but we'll definitely take the Europa League Haji is now our captain as well with 14 leadership that's cool Tony going down as an icon at the club in only his first season that is awesome but yes we've got one more year left still here as Rangers boss so let's get stuck into the transfer market we've been given a grand total of five million pounds to spend let's see who we can bring in to improve this team firstly it's time to say goodbye to some of our players from this rebuild Ridvan Yilmaz had a year left on his deal he is left to go to Spain to Valencia for 2.5 million where he's a squad player for them so he was never really an elite level left back for us. Great business from us, bringing in Tommy Doyle on a free. He was unhappy about the role he was playing in, so we were able to let him go the season after. He's joined Crystal Palace for 11 million, only started two games for his two, and we've made that much money for him. Yes, he is valued at more now, but we won't care. The 24-year-old leaves the club, and we make some easy cash from him. Carlo Holzer has left us too to go to Denmark to play for Copenhagen. Obviously, he was in Norway when we picked him up. Now he goes to his home country. Three good seasons for us, playing less and less over time. Started five games last year. Wasn't worth much didn't have too long left on his deal so he's gone for 1.5 mil and Vincenzo Milico who we bought in a couple of years ago has left back to Italy to Syria now to play for Empoli for 2.8 million bought him in for 1.5 did well for us but last season didn't really play too much at all and now he has left the club at a slight profit in comes a new centre-back on a free Facundo Medina we have been rocking these free deals in this rebuild he joins us from RC Lens who beat us all those years ago in the Europa League was it Champions League I can't remember now but we have stole their player centre-back back Argentinian as well another Argentinian player in this Rangers team he looks like a great pickup for free at 33 years of age Wilf Zaha joins us as a squad player able to play up front and on the wing of course in that inside forward position on the left I think he's going to be a great option to have nice to have him at the club he'll give us a season or two I'm sure before leaving having joined us from Galatasaray one Scottish fans might love Aaron Hickey has joined us here at Rangers obviously started at Celtic so maybe Rangers fans won't like that too much went to Hearts that's where he really made a name for himself before moving to Bologna and then to Brentford where he's been playing three seasons some in the Premier League and doing very well available as a free transfer 33 caps for Scotland nice to have a Scottish player back in the lineup comes in as one of our stars and he's a great option at left back and right back too we spent 5.75 million on Kang Ng Lee from PSG formerly of Mallorca and Valencia played a few seasons at PSG 
never really got into their first team, so he was transfer listed for £5 million pounds or so. I think in real life he's just joined them this summer, so I haven't seen how good he's going to be just yet. I don't really know him too well personally, but the South Korean, rated by the scouts, great ability, can play in that shadow striker role and hopefully will do a good job of it. And we keep the Argentinian theme going, this time bringing in Rodrigo Villagra from Teleres. After five great seasons for them, he was available for six mil, great tackler, great passer, and a brilliant central midfield option. I think now we've pretty much got a full Argentinian midfield at this rate, but this is where our squad finishes up. Dean Henderson and Brolin as our goalkeepers at right back. We have got Clevin, Williams, and Hickey at left back. Hickey too, alongside Valeri and Williams on that side as well. Some very versatile fullbacks there. Centre backs, we've got Harwood Bellis, Medina, Zeno de Bass, and Kovacevic at the back with Leon King as well, who never really kicked on in this rebuild. Fabian Ryder, Dominguez, Gonzalez, and as well Villagra there in the midfield. Going forward, we've got Karabek, we've got Haji, Kabic, Diallo, Alex Lowry, who's been with us for so long, Ianis Haji, Kanging Lee, Zaha. And then up front, we've got Pereira, Stevenson, and Tony. Pereira, by the way, has sometimes been slotting in as the shadow striker, sometimes as the inside forward, and still playing very well for us, even after all these years. It looks like Rangers have got a really good pick up there by signing him. Stevenson still getting better, might loan him out this year, and then bring him back into the fold next season. But yes, our team is done. The rebuild is complete. We've got one more season left to see how they do. But this is our best 11 that we finish up with. It's Henderson in goal, Kalevin the Bass, Medina and Hickey with Dominguez, Fabian Ryder, Ahmad Diallo, Karabek, Danilo Pereira and Ivan Tony. What a lineup. Loads of great young players as well. Lots of players about to reach their prime two in this team. Let's see how we can do in our fifth and final season. And we've won the title yet again, 100 points. Celtic doing well on 94, but not enough and nowhere near the goal difference either to try and topple us at the top of the division. On top of that, Scottish Cup is ours. UEFA Super Cup is ours as well. And the Champions League, we made the round of 16, which isn't too bad at all. Getting knocked out by Arsenal 5-3, who eventually went on to win the competition for their third win in the last five years. Fair play to Mikel Arteta and co doing a very good job over there but yes I mean I would definitely class that as a successful season the Super Cup let's see beat Chelsea in penalties having drawn 2-2 nice to have a Super Cup and a Scottish Cup we beat Aberdeen 6-2 you know what to finish off let's quickly have a look at how well some of the players did and then we'll watch the match highlights so it looks like our best performers yet again have been Karabek Tony 65 goals and 45 appearances Stevenson did stay this year didn't go on loan has now scored four goals and six caps for Scotland and scored plenty of goals in the league he looks very promising and looks like he's going to be around here for quite a while. Hickey with a great season. Valerie, Cabbage too. Lots of great performers. But let's go and take a look at that win against Aberdeen. This is a team that I've managed in my own save Aberdeen. Like a 30 plus episode save. Absolutely loved it. Duke and Miofsky were heroes of that save. But it looks like we put them to the sword here. And even though the XG was fairly close, we have won 6-2. Let's watch these highlights, shall we? 35 minutes in, Duke opened the score and I won't show that. But then Aberdeen actually, did they go 2-0 up? Clarkson getting onto the wing, finds Miofsky, yes, Aberdeen were 2-0 up, but having gone 2-0 down, it looks like we replied straight away, we poach the ball off of Aberdeen, Ahmad Diallo gets in behind and slots in to make it 2-1 to us, then we kick off in the second half, and after 58 minutes, it looks like we get the equaliser with Valerie on the left-hand side, finding Kabic, who scores, joined us early on and developed into a real, real good talent for us, that was 2-2, then in the 80th, we claim the winner with Valerie on the left-hand side, finding Ryder, who found Dominguez, and that must have destroyed Aberdeen to make it 3-2, to because we scored another three before the game was up. Lee Kang in to Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad Diallo finds Tony. Tony with a miss kick. Falls to Haji, the captain, who scores to make it 4-2 to settle the victory. But then Ivan Tony wasn't yet on the score sheet and clearly he wanted to be, making it 5-2 with a very good finish there after Lee Kang in played him in. And then in the 92nd minute, he gets his second, finding Fabian Ryder to Haji to Lee Kang in with another great incisive pass. Him and Tony together seem to have a real good link up. That made it 6-2. That was the trophy won. That's one Europa League, one Super Cup, three league titles, one Premier Sports Cup, maybe two, I can't remember now, and also the Scottish Cup. We won everything available to us other than the Champions League. Looks like the club's in the process of a potential takeover. Finances, we've got £32 million in the balance. We've got facilities in a great place. And we are now a four-star reputation club too with a great team who are only going to get better. And Ivan Tony has now gone down as a legend at the club in only two seasons here, which is awesome to see. But there you go. That's the end of this rebuild, guys. If you did enjoy it, smash the like button. Subscribe and let me know down below who you want to see next. Thank you for watching and goodbye.